the name of the game in this section is to graph the sine and the cosine function. That's the title. Well, graphs of sine and cosine is the title. And then we're going to plot these things. That's the goal. So uh, if, if you think about it, this picture kind of illustrates inputs for, say, the wrapping function and outputs for the wrapping function on the unit circle, right? So for instance, if your input in the wrapping function is pi 6, you can think of that as an angle measure, pi, pi 6 or 30 degrees. But you can also think of it on the unit circle, you can think of it as uh, the, the output as the point at the end of this arc length on the unit circle, right? Up to, uh, so, so in other words, this arc length is pi 6 as well. And so the input is pi 6, the output is rad 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And what this picture does for us is it tells us how to graph the sine and cosine in, in the Cartesian way. So this is, a, this, is not, uh, this is a different representation from what we're talking about today, but we can use it to get, uh, to get values for the sine and cosine graphs that, we're about, that I'm about to present, okay? So keep this picture in mind. So to start with, uh, let's graph one full period of the sine of x. So if I make a little t-chart, um, I'm going to plot, uh, oh, notice the input now is x, and that x has nothing to do with the adjacent side of a triangle. It's just what we're calling the input instead of t. Uh, so we have x for the input and sine of x for the output. That's what a function is, inputs and outputs, ordered pairs, if you like. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to plot all the values, just enough to get an idea of what this looks like. I'm going to plot uh, zero radians. We're in radians here when we plot on the Cartesian plane. So this is going to be, uh, when we plot it, this is going to be the x-axis. This is going to be the y-axis. So we're going to plot zero. How about, uh, let's, let's do the, the, the inputs at the corners uh, in terms of the unit circle. So like pi over 2, pi, let's do an input of 3 pi over 2, and let's go all the way to 2 pi. So if we want the sine values based on the unit circle, all we have to do is look at, okay, remember sine, we discovered this week, uh, sine, if the input is t instead of x, the sine of t is equal to, now this is relating to the unit circle, not to what we're doing down there. It's different, different x and y. The sine of t is equal to y, remember, for the output of the, where y is the second coordinate, the output of the wrapping function. So all of these y values in all of these output points represent output values for the sine function. All of them, right? We're only going to graph a few of them, but all of them represent output values. So in other words, if the input is 0, the output is 0. If the input is pi 6, the output is 1 half. This is for sine function. If the input is 0, the output is 1. If the input is uh, pi, the output is 0. If the input is 3 pi over 2, the output is negative 1. Those are the values I'm going to plot, except for the pi 6 one. So sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, sine of pi is 0, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, sine of 2 pi, you're back all the way around, so what's the output going to be? Zero. 0. Same, same as f what we get for an input of 0 because sine is a periodic function, the period is 2 pi. So, I mean, that's, there's an infinite number of inputs and outputs for the sine function between 0 and 2 pi, but those are the ones that we can plot to get a good idea of what this graph looks like. So I'll put in 2 pi. I'm only plotting one period. And it's easiest, when you scale this thing, it's, easy, it's easiest to plug in uh, the length of the period first, which is 2 pi. We're going to start at 0 and go to 2 pi. And then plug in the halfway mark, halfway between 0 on the x-axis and 2 pi. So that would, be, of course, be pi. And then what's, what's, the one, what's the one quarter mark halfway between 0 and the halfway mark of pi? Pi halves. What's the 3 quarter mark going to be? Here's an easy way to remember it. Just take the average of the 1 half mark, pi, and the full period mark, 2 pi. 
pi plus 2 pi divided by 2. Take the average, right? P 3 pi over 2. And so we're breaking up the, the period into quarters. Why? Because there's four quadrants, right? We're doing it kind of by quarter. But again, this is our Cartesian graph, and it's not going to look like the unit circle notation we used uh, above. So uh, what's the biggest sign is ever going to get? The, well, it's never going to be bigger than the radius of the unit circle, right? So if you go back and look at the unit circle, and these output points, the biggest sign can get is, is 1. That's if there's no like, added values because you can... Well, yeah, you can always add to 1, but, but for just the basic sine function, f of x, sine of x, the biggest it can get is 1. What's the smallest it can get? Like one. Negative 1, right? So uh, you don't go by the same distance marks, maybe on both axes. It would look funny if we did. Uh, because pi over 2 is actually bigger than 1. But then we'd have a really short graph if I went by the same distance, distances between the scales. So I'll, you know, I'm even going to go higher than that. So I'm going to call that 1 on the y-axis. And that's okay. You have to be consistent with your scaling on any particular axis. The distance between the scale marks should be the same. But, but on any particular axis, but not, you can, you can switch. You can change the scale distance on different axes. It would. Uh, for right now, we're graphing one full period, but we're going to talk about that, yeah. So I'm just plotting these points, you guys. 0, 0, pi halves 1, pi 0, mm, pi, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and then 2 pi 0. And you can see the sine waves start to form, right? And you guys know from previous experience that if you just connect the dots in a nice smooth curve, You'll get one cycle of the sine function, one period of the sine function, right? And then what, it, what were you saying a, a little bit ago? After two pi, it would repeat yeah, this picture is going to repeat itself over and over again as you go to the right and as you go to the left. So uh, this is just one period, and that period or cycle that sine wave repeats itself and, and looks the same out to infinity, left and right. Okay?